He's not scared. Freaking grab my little knife, you know, <laughs> put, it, put it on my back, you know what I mean? Because, man, these, these Russians are, they're no joke, bro. I had to f you up, right? No. I was like, oh, mother f I was like, you better not f***ing hit me, bro. I swear you better not hit me. I was all buckling up, but I was all shaking, bro. And thank God, right at that moment, a freaking undercover cop had walked by. He's like, oh, fuck. Drop your right shoulder down. Oh, shit. Thank you. Good. <sighs> All right, what's going on out there in YouTube land? Today I'm coming to you from 3D Cuts, Albuquerque, New Mexico, with Derek Montoya, one of the 3D triplets, the man that runs the show, keeps my hair looking fresh, right here. Uh, tell them a little bit about like some of the stuff you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis as far as like pain, aggravation, at least physical pain. Well, you know, I, I um, everything's a vision, it's a dream, so every morning I get up, I go to the gym, you know, I overwork my body, and then from the gym, you know, I come straight to work and just cut hair all day, so um, I met Dr. Bo a while back, uh, had some sh shoulder problems, you know, when I first met him, uh, and needless to say, when I first met this guy, seriously, this guy was in a one, uh, building office uh right off the ghetto over on wyoming freaking you gotta go back past all the dealerships you walk into his office painting his office come in here i'll work on you this guy just started like working on my shoulder freaking um within probably like two months i'm like able to start benching bench pressing getting on my workouts i'm like man dr bo's the real deal for you know what he just well he had just moved or came down from from dallas to new mexico this was probably like i'd say like seven years ago and um that was just something about Dr. Bo. I just met him and he started working on, like I say, on my shoulder. And I was like, wow, man. I was like, before I couldn't really lift that much on the bench and started working on him. Like, this guy's really a genius. And just started working working on me every time I would see him. You know, I would trade him out a haircut. Just being entrepreneurs, you know, vision visionaries, dream chasers. And before we know it, here's Dr. Bo, freaking number one doctor on the planet. Been, been an honor to work with him and, and get work done by him. So I'm honored today to have him work on me. Been having a, like more more on my lower back problems right here. You already fixed the part? shoulder, but yeah, yeah. like right back here. And you get a lot of neck tension too, right? Yeah. Having all the clippers for yeah. hours on end. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, makes sense. All right, well let's get you feeling better today, my man. What do you got here? Rose quartz and amethyst. Yes, sir. Nice. All right, let's check your range of motion first. So turn your head to the left all the way, and now let's go to the right all the way. And it kind of binds up a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go back to center and look up to the ceiling. That's pretty good. And then look down all the way. Tension there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then try to bring this right arm up all the way, like up over your shoulder like that. Keep the elbow straight though. So straighten your elbow up. Straighten your elbow. And then try to bring it up that way. You want to see the other side? Okay. Must feel the same, or is one easier? I always feel like my right is harder. Yeah, it feels tighter. Yeah, okay. I can hold up, sorry. All right, let's get you fixed up. 505 area code, take that shit with me everywhere that I go. Look straight down. Shout out my boy, Hondro. There's a good spot. Breathe through that, my man. Good. All right, look left for me. Oh, 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 oh son of a bitch. There's a good one. Oh, and then back to center and look left again. So tell us a little bit about like some of the fighters that have come through here over the years, man. This place is kind of like an icon for Albuquerque. Well, it's really been a dream, a dream come true. You know, it's like, oh, we started a, uh, cutting up a local fighter named uh, Diego Sanchez, you know, and Diego would come in here, he just won the Ultimate Fighter, so, and I just started watching the Ultimate Fighter show, which was... Like 05, right? Yeah, this was back in 05. Oh. And I started watching the Ultimate Fighter, you know, that's when I started, first started getting into it. This was before I even met Diego, you know, so I became a barber and Diego Sanchez walked in the shop, you know, after winning the show, so you're just like, fuck, dude, this is amazing, you know? And you just moved here from Taos or yeah, you've been just, here for a minute? I had been up here since 96 from okay, Taos, you've been here for so a minute. I had been up here for a minute. You know, just always dreamed of being a barber ever since I was in high school. Nice. So it was cool. What made you, you know? want, what, what made you wait in barbering? Was there something that... You know what, um, we grew up kind of, kind of poor, so 
we started cutting our own hair, me and my brothers, with nice. triplets. So. At what age you start cutting? Yeah, it? we're probably like, I would say like 13, 14, okay. just cutting up each other's hair, you know, just making each other look good. Our mom started cutting our hair. And then nice. We kind of grew older, so we just started cutting. We didn't even cut our own hair, you know, just got into it. And just always wanted wanted to be a barber since since I was in high school. Oh. And you, um, and you went to Taos High? Yeah, I went to Taos High. I graduated in 96 and moved up here. Immediately. Right away, how to get out of that small town mentality and chase that big dream so there you go i came up here i started doing plumbing became a licensed plumber by the time i was 25 didn't want to do that no more just wanted to be a barber got my barber's license and started cutting hair this is probably about 15 years ago okay. and like i say that's that's right when the ultimate fire show had came out so and, the timing uh, was perfect timing was perfect you know and i became a barber diego would come in here walk in here with 230 packs freaking like 10 chicks and like, <laughs> like one other guy, you know? So yeah. I was like, damn, this is amazing. Dude's living know? the life, huh? I'm like, I could be a barber, you know? And, yeah. And then it would be cool, you know? I'd get a phone call from Diego, hey, you wanna go have lunch? And I'd be like, damn, I'm so honored, you know what I mean? Like, damn, I'm gonna go have lunch with Diego Sanchez, you know? Just tying everybody all, I'd cancel out appointments. I gotta go eat lunch with Diego Sanchez, you know? And man, it's crazy. We just became really good, good friends, pretty much like brothers throughout the nice. years, you know? And, through Diego, he introduced me to um, to to other fighters. You know, it was back in the day, it was guys like Rashad Evans and, and George St. Pierre, and started cutting up Rashad Evans. He 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 moved to Albuquerque, started cutting him up. I even remember um, texting him the night he won the belt. I was like, congratulations, because I had I had just cut his hair before that fight. You know, and he texted me back a couple hours later, thank you, D. And I'm like, wow, you know, here I am, a small town boy, just cutting kind of up the, world champions. these world champions you know and these That's world champions time, just calling me hey can you cut my hair you know venting to me you know i i became really spiritual at the time and and there i am like sharing my faith with with some of these these mainstream fighters you know yeah and, and another memory was was uh, george st pierre calls me and some weird voice calls me and i'm like who the hell is this it's freaking i'm like, who's this is that are you weird, crazy in your head sometimes man we're, we're ducks and i can't that with you all with eddie you do and i'm like who the hell is this i was ready to hang out on him <laughs> hang up on him i was like man people messing around somebody and, pranking me and it's freaking george st pierre bro and he's all this is george st pierre i was like oh shit, george oh my whole attitude changed man. i was like yeah just go up to want to come come down you know and and come and come get your haircut and george st pierre walks in here you know and freaking i give him the burke fade there you go the burke fade is the two and the the razor on top the straight up gangster fade and then uh, i was like all right george st pierre i'm gonna make you look good bro and i gave him the freaking albuquerque chin strap boom 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 the straight up chin chin strap Cut him up, freaking, to this day, you look at, you go, go look look up George St. Pierre, he still has the chin strap. So you put him he, out of the chin oh, strap. Oh yeah, straight up. I Boom. can see it was that 505 chin strap. He, there you go. Even after I shaved him, he's like, oh, never had this before. I never had this, it looks good. And now I look at him, I'm like, damn, that chin strap came from, from Albuquerque, New Mexico. So that, that, that was another uh, good moment I've had. Uh, what, what are some of the craziest stories that like fighters have told you? Oh man, some of the craziest stories? Yeah. You don't have to really put them out like that, but like if you got like something, I'm sure the audience wants to hear some a little bit of juice. Oh my God, I have some dirt on some some fighters, but I don't know if I want to. You know, as a do, barber, do, as a barber, you become their counselor. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, don't don't don't. You're, do we're dirt, gonna have to do just, a uh, sec second episode, second episode <laughs> on the on the on the dirt part of the fighters. On, on Patreon, but, but the, 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 the crazy up. the craziest thing I had to do was um, um, cut up um, um, Alistair Overeem and uh, freaking. Um, Andre Arlowski at the same time because they're fighting each other and they're in the same camp. So that was a little, little kind of hard. You know what I mean? Like you ought to pick like, oh, bro, they both treat you so good. Literally, both fighters have been amazing to me. They have both treated me. Andre got mad at you though, right? Oh, yeah. That's the crazy thing. Andre turned on me um, freaking. Um, yeah, after, he, came to the, he came to the shop? Oh, yeah. He came to the shop and he stayed sitting there for like two of my haircuts. And I was like, oh, man, he wants a VIP cup. But he stayed dogging me. You know what I mean? I was like, like what's up, homie? <laughs> You got a problem? And Andre sits up. He goes, yo, I got that problem with you. You come outside right now. Oh, shit. All right. So I went All right. He's not scared. Freaking grab my little knife, you know, <laughs> put, it, put it on my back. You know what I mean? Because, man, these, these Russians, are they're no joke, bro. When I, when I first started cutting Andre, uh, too, I, I used to shake on him, shake when I cut him dude. up, you know. So he's all calling me outside. He's all, you give Arlester my number, you tell me the truth. 
I thought about it, bro, and I was like, so close, I was, I was going to lie, bro, and I don't have the heart to lie, bro. You know what I mean? I don't have the freaking heart, bro. And I looked at him in the eyes, and I go, yeah, I gave Alice, I gave Alice your number. He goes, I'd f*** you up right now. I was like, oh, mother f***. I was like, you better not fucking hit me, bro. I swear, you better not hit me. I was all buckling up, but I was all shaking, bro. And thank God, right at that moment, a freaking undercover cop had walked by. He's like, you all right, Derek? I was like, yeah, sir. Hang tight real quick. Like, what's up? I was like, what? I was like, what's up, bro? You got to leave, bro. You better leave. But he's like, you take all my stuff. I give you down. Dang. I swear, bro. It's so sad, bro. I'm going to be the man and be honest with everybody, bro. I went to the back, bro. I sat down and I fucking cried, bro. I was like, Dang. fuck, bro. I liked, I, I really liked um, um, Andre a lot, bro. Yeah. But for us to have beef like that, yeah, yeah, dude. It's like, hey, guys, watch the Russians, man. They'll they turn probably, on you quick. They'll turn on you real quick. You know, that's the moral of the story. Like, be, like yeah. I had my guard down, bro. I was like, you gave but him all you, my love, all my trust. Boys, yeah. Oh, me and Alistair, bro, 100%. And Andre got mad because I called him Alistair during their filming when they were <laughs> filming me cut his hair. I was like, hey, Alistair, he's like, I'm not Alistair. I'd kick your ass. Like, you ain't kicking shit, homie. But yeah, it was it was pretty. It was it, it was a, a heartbreaking story. That story was heartbreaking. That's a good one. I like that story. And my favorite fighter that I've cut up, and this is to the goat straight up from my heart, is BJ Penn, man. That BJ straight BJ's up so freaking right here, bro. I feel him right here in my heart. Yeah. BJ Penn, hundred percent treated me with full loyalty, full respect. We went out. It was crazy. Diego hits me up. And so you party with BJ then, yeah? Oh yeah, bro. Nice. So, so, so Diego's outside, bro, and he's sitting in his truck, and it's it's like seven o'clock. I'm getting ready to close down, and freaking um, Diego calls me, and I could see him out there. He's like, "Hey, D," he's like, "You want to go um, go have lunch? I mean, have dinner with me and BJ?" And I was like, "He BJ's in town." I was like, "Oh, oh really, yeah. bro?" So I started grabbing posters and all kinds of stuff, bro. Gotta go, <laughs> get some autographs. To, to go have BJ sign it, bro. Yeah, yeah. So Diego's like, "No, no, no, homie, it ain't like that. You know, you gotta be his friend. You can't just freaking um, um yeah, you can't be a fan. Yeah, you man. can't be a, you can't be a be a uh, you know what I mean? A yeah. freaking hardcore fan. Yeah, you gotta BJ's, go. And, uh, he's OG. He's from and, yeah, you gotta way go. Back. Yeah, way back. So I was like, "No, you're right, Diego." So freaking jumping Diego's truck, going there. Freaking walk in there, freaking up, upright, you know what I mean? Freaking straight up, uh, Diego and BJ sit across from each other, and it's me and Cabbage from each other, and BJ straight up looks at me straight up from across his tra the table, and he goes, he goes, hey, D, who's your homie? And I was like, hey, bro, I'm Derek, bro. And he looks at me straight up in the eyes. He goes, hey, bro, I bet you, I, I, he goes, I bet you could get it, huh? <laughs> BJ, I was like, you think so, BJ? I was like, hell yeah, BJ. That was one of the best compliments I ever had, bro. I was like, there you BJ go. Penn thinks I could get it. Yeah. What's up, BJ? Yeah, my, my BJ Penn story is him trying to convince me the earth yeah. is flat. Oh, my God. Is he thinks, is he a flat Yeah, he, was, he, he went all in, bro. He spent like two hours trying to like convince me. Oh my God! Did he really? Yeah, bro. Oh, I love BJ, bro. He's he, he was he went all in. He Man. he like had charts and stuff. Oh, I'm like no. BJ, come on, oh, bro. Oh my God, oh BJ. <laughs> all right, let's bring it right here. So, oh, fuck. Nice. This one's gonna go here. Drop your right shoulder down. Oh shit! Thank you. There we go. Now, now I feel like a freaking champion right now. So when you guys you went out out with BJ then? Yeah, we, uh, we actually. Um, I've heard some stories. He's a he's a wild party. Is that oh, yeah, accurate? It's, him and Diego are two peas in a pod. It's well, like, I've, I've heard all those stories. If you know Diego, you know BJ Penn. It, it, it's literally they're extreme they're, dudes. It's, oh, completely extreme. All or none. Freaking two peas in a pod. Well, I remember Diego was telling us that story about when he like threw a, a chair out of the palms window when BJ like, like 15 years ago. Yeah. Or Diego when the Maloofs like, gave him like the oh, top yeah. suite. Oh my god. <laughs> Those guys were in destruction when they were young. Feels so good. Push your head straight back. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. A little further. A little further. And right all the way. Keep turning. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Nice. Right back to center. We'll look up again. Up, straight up, straight up, straight up. Excellent. All the way down. And back to center. And down. And center. And down. And center. And down. There we go. All right, let's get that sub scab. So you're gonna go in and out like that. Keep moving that around. 
And then big shout out to Little D. It's my life right there. there you go. My son, that's why I do it every day too. I get up. My son wants, he's uh, Little 10. Little D, you're the man. He's 10 years old and all he all he dreams about, he even wants to drop out of school just to cut hair. His birthday's in, uh, in November and he already asked me to buy him a mannequin so he could start cutting hair. That's tight. Like, he's so amazing. He always tells me too, he's like, oh, can you get Dr. Bo to work on me? <laughs> he's, like, he's always having me rub his back, bro. He's always asking for me, bro. You watch too many he's, he's a big time fan. Nice. He watches more videos of you than... Well, shit, I'm a fan of his. Most of it. Most of his, uh, he has his little YouTube people that he watches and you're one of them. Yeah, yeah his, I, I, keep up, I, I, I keep up with you because of him. There like, you go. I, like, I'm all, Derek, show me all the updated, what's the, what's all the the updated, YouTube? All the updated YouTube people, you know? <laughs> so everybody I, I know on YouTube is because of my son. Nice. Nice. That's good. Okay, hand on the hip. And then we'll hook you here. Pull. And pull. That one's good. All right, face that way. Both hands here. Elbows in a little bit. Oh. There you go. How's that? So I'm gonna chop it up. Eat some lunch. There you go. All right, bring both arms over your head again. All the way up. How's that feel? So much better. That was more open? 100%. Yeah, it looks better. Look good? Yeah. Okay, let's sit right here again. Check his wrist. Look down to the left. And then how can they find you, man? Tell them where your social media is at, your website, um, yeah, address. To, thank you, guys. How um, to book appointments, get your haircut couple, like all these yes. fighters do. Um, get yourself a GSP chin strap. Yeah, let's do that, guys. Uh, book up online at 3dcutsalbuquerque.com in Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's 3dcutsalbuquerque.com. You can find us at 3D Cuts um, Barbershop on Facebook and Instagram. On so, IG. Um, feeling good right now, Dr. Bo. Thank you, Dr. Bo. Don't forget about Brandon Crespin, Instagram, YouTube. He's going to be putting up new content soon on his own channel. So subscribe. And then just kind of talk me through this wall, man. Like, what are some of the coolest pictures you got up here? Well, look, it's, I mean. What are some of your favorites? Um, you know, um, yeah, I mean, it goes all the way back to the WECDs. WECD, ECDs with, um, like, Cub Swanson used to come back in here. Look, we got it right here. That's authentic right there. Um, he, um, in the WEC days, he was my favorite fighter. So even to have my favorite fighter come in here and start cutting his hair is a dream come true. You know, that's like, like an honor. So um, yeah, it, it's kind of cool. When you look back, it's in history. This is like, let me show you guys like one of the first posters. Here's here's Rashad Evans here. You know, yeah, we got young are there, there man. Some, some names here. You know, that's back when Leonard and Cowboy came back and. Uh, and you've been in the same spot. Started all teaming all up. Whole time? Yeah, it's been in the same spot the whole time. You know, we have Keith Jardine right here, Frank Beer, you know, that has been in here. You know, of course, John Jones brought in the belt. Right here, GSP. Alistair Overeem. Sergio Perez. We've had Anthony Perez in here. Mike Perry's been in here. Come on back. These are some of our barbers. Redbeard. Jesus. Steven. Say what's hey up. There. And Cody. But I wanted to show you guys this right here. This is where it all started right here. This was our very, very first poster in the shop was this King of the Cage right here. Poster and this was a uh, the first poster that we took with Diego Sanchez, and there's the King of the Cage poster right behind it. And those are the three brothers. That's me, Derek, uh, Damien, and Dominic. We're the 3D brothers that started this barbershop called 3D Cuts Barbershop. So, and this whole, whole area is really um, dedicated to Diego Sanchez right here. You got a lot of autographs in these gloves. Look, um, both of them. I mean, it's an honor to have cut both Rashad Evans and John Jones at the same time.
I mean, not at the same time, but, but knowing, knowing that they have bought each other. Now, this right here is my favorite poster on the whole shop right here. It's the evolution of, of MMA from the Gracie Baja to the Matt Hughes to the Chuck Liddell to the Anderson Silva and then, and then of course, the GOAT. Here we got our, our bench right here, 3D Cuts bench. That has been signed by, I think there's Anthony and Sergio Pettis right here, Alistair Overeem. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go.